This is another addition to the ongoing mini-series called Localhost 1000, where I'm documenting the progress of building and launching a web app, while sharing the things I learned along the way. This is my attempt to putting something out there that I built for real users to use, and hopefully have something good come out of it. So over the past few months, I've been working on building this web app, taking up some of my weekends and most of my evenings. And today I want to talk about the key highlights of my learnings while building this app and deploying the MVP to production. I learned a lot while building this app that looked like a skeleton two months back to giving it some flesh and bone. I was so swamped by the whole process that I didn't really get the time to do a follow-up video on it. My goal was to get this app up and running by May 17th because on May 17th there is a Salesforce conference happening here in Prague. I wanted to get the app to a decent place before that so that I can get some feedback from real people and know where I want to potentially take this app in the future. So first let's rewind a bit and talk about the idea behind the startup. I wanted to create a platform for Salesforce developers to practice programming in Apex, a backend language used in Salesforce. So Apex only compiles in a Salesforce cloud instance. So my platform basically works as a bridge between the user and a Salesforce cloud instance where the Apex code compiles. So essentially the lead code for Salesforce developers. So since my last video, I've been coding this web app on and off during my weekends to get it to a place where it's acceptable. So I wanna share my progress and things I learned along the way. So I wanna talk about two types of debt, ignorance debt and how frustrating it is. Technical debt, meaning things I changed from the initial MVP. Third, the bugs and errors that I ran into while building this. And finally, I want to share a demo of what's in production now. I know these days there are a lot of content around how someone built an app in 24 hours or how someone coded something over the weekend. It works well on YouTube and it's very nice content to watch, but what we don't see or hear is how many apps that person has built in the past. It might be uh, the person's 10th or 15th app, meaning they have gone through the process of building something from A to Z, and now they're just iterating and repeating the process. But if you're building something for the first time, which I am, you have to pay something called the ignorance debt. Most likely you will run into tons of errors and you will learn a lot of things along the way. There are things that you know you don't know and there are things that you don't know you don't know, if that makes sense. Sure, I have built personal websites here and there. I build crude components at work all the time but building a web app from A to Z requires a lot of knowledge. Starting from knowing both front-end and back-end and knowing which tech stack to choose based on your current knowledge. Should you do server-side rendering or client-side rendering? Why is that even a consideration? How should I deploy something to prod? Things that work on your local environment might not even work in production and things that you did in your initial MVP might not be even production worthy. So my point is don't get demotivated or masked by the idea how everyone knows everything. But in reality, everyone is learning everything on the go and it's very much a trial and error process. Which brings me to my next point, technical debt. So when I initially had the idea, I just wanted to build it out to see if it's even possible to build something like this. My mentality was very much like, just make it work at all costs. But more often than not, what you have built in your initial MVP is just not the best solution. There is a better way of doing it or it's just not scalable. So specific to my app, after I have validated the user written code for any compilation errors, what I was doing initially was trying to run a test class to see what test cases passed or failed and just fetch those results. Once I did that as an initial approach, I soon realized it was too slow because running test classes in Salesforce just takes too long. My second approach was to just call the function of the user written code and compare it to my expected result. And it actually worked and it was way faster than my first approach. But then I ran into another issue of I couldn't fetch 
my results of whether a test case passed or failed from Salesforce back to my web app. So my third approach was to make a REST callout to get the logs of the logged in user. And this is how my initial MVP worked even in my first video. Then later on, I actually ran into another issue. Sometimes when the user hits the submit code button twice, sometimes I get the older log or the older results because of caching and how Salesforce saves each user's logs. So it was not really reliable because of one out of five times it fails. So in my final approach, I came up with another solution where I just threw an exception each time a test case failed so that I could get that results immediately along with my response of when the user code is compiled. So this works, uh, it's much more efficient than my first uh, initial three approaches. I don't have to make a second REST API callout. I don't have to fetch any results from Salesforce. I just get it in one callout. While the compilation happens, I also get the results of all the test cases which is a much more better or elegant solution than my initial approaches. So my point is that whatever you're building as an initial MVP might not be your best solution. So there's no point in sitting and thinking that I'm just gonna build this app only once I have the perfect solution. It's very much an iterative process and you have to build some crappy solutions initially to even compare what solution is better than the other solution or which one works better than the other one. So just build. So when you're building a web app, you have two servers running. So in your local, you might have your friend end or your client running on localhost 2000 and you have your backend or your server running on localhost 1000. So the most common error that you can run into in this case is called course. The number of hours that I spend debugging and trying to fix this error is just insane. So for those who don't know, course stands for cross-origin resource sharing. So basically your browser blocks any request that comes from a different origin. So if your friend is trying to make a request to your backend, it would throw an error saying, hey, you can't do that because your request is coming from a different origin than where your friend end is hosted. Later, I learned there are ways how you can deal with this error in your local development by using something called proxy. Basically, you fool your browser by setting a proxy to your backend server and by making a request from your friend end, browser would just think that the request is from the same origin. But this same trick won't work in production if you're hosting your friend end and back end on different servers. So I went down this rabbit hole of trying to fix cores and in hindsight, I killed a lot of my time. But then I came to learn something called SSR or server-side rendering. So instead of hosting two different servers, you essentially deploy one app, which is your backend server, and then you serve your front end as static files. There are pros and cons to both approaches, server-side rendering versus client-side rendering. That's a topic for a whole another video. But in my case, I couldn't see why I couldn't leverage server-side rendering, and it actually works for my use case. Bottom line, what I learned was what works in your local environment does not always work in production. So sometimes you're fixing the same bug twice. So now I want to jump into my laptop here and show you what I have in my production. It's not fully final yet because I was fully focused on getting the core functionality working, I would recommend anyone building something to do exactly the same because at the end, you can always take time to make your UI look pretty. If your core functionality is not working, users really don't care if your UI is actually pretty. So once I jump in here, basically I have a landing page with a hero that says uh, learn to code in Apex and it has a, a sign in button. I would like to add more things to the homepage. That's why one of the reason I haven't pushed this to production yet. So once you hit uh, sign in with uh, Salesforce, it would redirect you to the login page. 
So I'm just going to use one of one of the developer org that I already signed into. So as you can see here from localhost, it's actually redirected to my Versal production server because my proxy for my local is still pointing to my production. This is one of the reason it's redirecting me to my production environment. But I actually made some changes to this page here, which shows all the problems. Uh, last night I did some fixing for it to get some uh, drop shadow. So here it actually looks a bit better here. So this is my local and this is my production, uh, how it looks. Uh, it has some drop shadow here. It does, um, it does show some color depending on uh, how difficult a problem is. Here it's easy, it's green, medium is orange, and hard is like red. I just have five problems here. I might add a few more before next week, but I just wanted things working. And I have a now bar here where you username is supposed to show, but it's not still showing, which is something I'll fix tonight. Here you might, you should see your score, which is also not working right now. Like I said, I'm just fully focused on getting the core functionality working and all of this is an extra. And here I have a logo button, which I will show you how it works. Uh, so this is my production, basically. The new changes are there, not yet. So once I hit solve challenge, it should take you into a page where you have the editor and where the problem is described. And there's a button here, submit code, and this is not fully flexed. So this is one of the reasons I still haven't pushed it to production because I want to fix the button and where it is actually aligned. But this is a editor, it's a Monaco, it's called a Monaco editor that I lo uh, loading here in this page. And here you have a problem that describes the problem and sampling input and output exactly like how my MVP is, but it just looks a bit better now. So once you hit submit button, it should show you all the results. So test case one passed uh, input and what was the actual uh, output here because I gave a right solution, right? So if I give a wrong solution, it should be pretty instant to give me all the negative results. So now you can see it failed. Uh, actually, uh, output is minus one when the expected was five. Um, I could give it something else. Now let me try to divide it. Um, it should do something. Uh, so let me try to multiply it. So it should give me another result. So if I try to divide it, uh, one of my test cases has zero. Remember from my first video to draw an exception actually. So if I say submit code, it's a math exception dividing by zero. Uh, this is not really user friendly in my opinion, but I am actually trying to fix it uh, this tonight to actually give a much more reasonable error message here saying that maybe one of the test cases is zero. That's why it's trying to divide by zero. Um, so this is just one problem. So you can always go back, try another one. So here the problem is basically to check the input coming as uh, is a prime number or not. So I'm not going to write the whole logic here now. So I'm just going to return a Boolean saying um, true to just show whether it works. So when I hit, once I hit summit, so it says test case one passed because one of the input was seven, which is a prime number, uh, but the other ones failed actually. Uh, one of them failed because it was false. This is basically that, and I can make some syntax error here and it should show you the result of that. So the core functionality is working and at the end I could actually log out and it will take you to the action page. This is what I have in production, which does not have a landing page. So, but if I go to my action local host here, um, 5173, this is actually what's gonna be in production soon once I push the changes. Um, I will have a proper landing page and a sign-in button. So that's all I have in production now. So that's all the UI changes and fixes that I have made since my initial MVP. Uh, so from looking like a skeleton, uh, it has some flesh and bone now. Uh, I haven't fully finished with all the UI changes. I still would like to make some more changes over the weekend and get it into a decent form before the conference. My goal was to really get this working before the conference or get it to a decent place so that I can get some feedback from my potential users before I do any more changes or I add more features to this app. I have an idea of what features I can add to this app, but I really don't want to spend any more time on this until I get some feedback from potential users because I'm really careful about the fact that I don't want to get attached to my idea too much because I want to be in a place where 
if there's no real use case or real people to use this, I want to pivot and not get attached to my idea and keep adding features on something where there are not real users to actually use it. So thanks for watching my first video. I really enjoyed the feedback on that one. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have been, thanks for watching.